I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, and welcome back to Genesis Does, where today we're taking a look at Pyramid Magic. This is another one of those Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive games that was only released for the Sega game Toshikon service. And if you don't know what that is, a long story short is a modem for a Sega Mega Drive exclusive to Japan. Some of these games did see later life as part of collections for Sega CD or other platforms. And in this case, that turns out to be true because it was included on Game no Konsume Volume 1 and also appears in the Wonder Mega Collection. This is what I would describe as a puzzle platformer, meaning that you have to traverse higher and lower areas to get to your goal but you have to solve a puzzle in order to traverse those areas. And in this case, it involves you collecting different colored keys, each key unlocking a different box. And when all of the boxes are unlocked, you can eliminate the robot, which is blocking your way to the exit from each level of the pyramid. And the pyramid itself is dozens, possibly hundreds of stages long, because these can all be generated with a simple map in memory. You can see that they're all tile based. So all you need to do is store a few bits and bytes that comprise the map level and not have to actually draw the whole map each time. So even over a modem, they could load this game up quite a bit. You have several different techniques for how you clear the level. You use A to kick, C to jump, and pressing C twice causes you to attack a block underneath you if you need to destroy it while pressing B next to a block allows you to pick it up and then you can drop it and sometimes you need to be carrying the block once you picked it up with B if you have a narrow area that you can only get through while the weight of the block is pushing you down also pressing C and start at the same time causes you to give up the level basically the Sokoban I give up strategy of you can't solve the puzzle, you gotta start it over again. Or pressing A and start allows you to skip a level and go to the next one, but there's a finite limit on that. You can only do it three times before the game says, no way Jose, you've been skipping enough, you're done. You gotta either figure it out or game over and start back from the beginning. Now, as you may have noticed from watching my footage, I was making some mistakes initially when I was playing this game, given that it had no release in the United States and no instruction manual. I was just figuring it out as I went. And one of the things that I thought you were supposed to do was destroy the chests with the block and destroy the enemies with the block. That seems like a natural strategy for a game where you can pick up blocks, right? But no, the blocks are only used in this case to either hinder or help you get through specific areas. The blocks aren't actually for attacking the enemies or for breaking things open. The only way that the blocks help you break something open is very indirectly. If there's a platform that you can't reach and there's a chest on it and you need to get to it, you use the block to create a step to get to that platform and then you just open the chest by attacking it. You don't need the block to open the chest at all. So once I finally got that strategy down and realized that I could open the chest myself once I got to them, things started to progress a lot quicker. And the pause menu was helpful with that because that's when I realized there were button combinations and even though I couldn't read them in Japanese, I could sort of discern just from the pause screen that, aha, there is more things I can do than just pick up a block and use a block. So I just started experimenting with button combos at that point and intuitively figured it out by trying every different one possible with A, B, and Z. Now, I could have saved myself a lot of time by simply going to segaretro.org because they actually have an entry for Pyramid Magic. Even though you won't find this game listed on Wikipedia, or most other common resources, I would say SegaRetro.org is the place to go if you're ever looking for something obscure. When I was looking for the Pengo version that was only released for Mega Drive in Japan, it was SegaRetro.org that gave me the information that I needed. A highly recommended website. 
They've chronicled all of the Sega Mega Net modem games. They've chronicled all of the late release Genesis games. Not all of the entries are super long, but they're all super helpful. And so Pyramid Magic is a game that I have no problem recommending you find a way to play via emulator or flash drive or your Mega Drive Pro, whatever choice you have, I would say this is one to go out of your way to experiment with because if there's a physical cartridge of it, it's a bootleg. It means somebody in China mass produced it because they saw this article on SegaRetro.org or they saw this video on YouTube and said, aha, we can burn this to EEPROMs and sell it to people like an authentic Sega Genesis game and charge whatever amount we want because it costs us pennies to manufacture them. Don't do that. Don't pay a bootlegger for a copy of this game. Play it via some other method because the original copyright holders aren't getting the money anyway when you buy a bootleg from China. And furthermore, Pyramid Magic is one of those games that I would classify as abandonware. It doesn't seem like Sega has realized there's any potential in localizing it to English or making it available on other compilations other than the ones they already issued in the 90s. So they don't see the value in this property. And if they did and decided to do something with it, I'd happily buy it because this is the kind of game I enjoy playing. I like puzzle strategy games. I like puzzle platforming games. I like being presented with a single screen and some obstacles and some things you have to collect to get to the goal. It's a very old school video game format that goes all the way back to playing Montezuma's Revenge on an Apple IIe when I was in high school. I dig that kind of game. And if you like that kind of game too, then I would say try Pyramid Magic whatever way you have to do it. Just know that when you do play this game, you are to some degree embarking into uncharted territory because there's not going to be a game facts for this. There's not going to be a walkthrough. I don't think there are any YouTube long plays of Pyramid Magic and somebody will probably correct me after this or somebody will create one after I upload this video and then it will exist. But if you're trying Pyramid Magic, you're going into it with blinders on and figuring it out for yourself as you go, as I had to do. But I actually find that rewarding because if everything is told to you before you do it, what's the point of even doing it at all? At that point, you could just do a tool assisted speed run and program a robot to play it and they would finish every level for you. If you want to do that as a theoretical exercise to find out what the fastest way is to finish Pyramid Magic, well then more power to you. Program a taskbot and see what it can do. But if you're going to have some fun and just try it for yourself no matter how long it takes, I'd say Pyramid Magic would be the kind of game that you can while away many a minute or hour in and the only downside, as far as I can tell, is that because it was a Mega Net modem game, the amount of music in the game is very limited, very short, and repeats over and over, and you might find it tiresome after a while. If that's the case, then don't listen to the music. Mute the volume because the sound effects are pretty minimal anyway, and just put on a soundtrack of your choice, your favorite CD, your favorite video game music, Substitute in whatever you'd like and enjoy Pyramid Magic with your own selection instead of the game's built-in music. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. This has been Genesis Does. Like, share, comment. It always helps the channel. And I thank you for watching.